All right, we're going to talk about how to um, set up a house that has no CAD file, no calibration, no control points, uh, measured out in the field with your rover using Trimble SiteWorks, and then export it to a machine uh, so that you can use it with your Trimble Earthworks or Trimble GCS 900 on your 3D excavator. So first thing we're going to do is create a project, new project. So we're going to say change project, um, and I am going to name it grandpa's house um, we use US survey feed so I am gonna leave it like that um, so one thing that you can use is a, a coordinate system so if you're using a VRS system sometimes it's nice to be able to do that otherwise you can just <clears throat> uncheck that so um, the thing with the VRS system is you're going to have to go to your bench and get that elevation, write that elevation down, and then that's what you're going to um, elevate your your pad to from what you're going to your basically your finished floor is what I would uh, get the elevation or what you would bench your laser to. Um, otherwise, if you're just setting up a base station, you can set that at say a 100 or whatever you want um, arbitrarily. So. Um, we're just going to use a, the coordinate system, so um, some people may or may not understand the coordinate system, so select uh, the coordinate system, check that box, go into coordinate system. In Minnesota, we're lucky enough to have counties. Um, if not, you can use state plane. Um, so what it is, is it's just a horizontal positioning system, so it, it eliminates uh, calibration in, in a sense, if you will. So. If you're in any state besides basically Minnesota and Wisconsin, I think for the most part are the ones you can see Wisconsin counties and Minnesota counties right here. So um, you're going to be in a, in a state plane. Uh, Minnesota has the same thing. It's confusing, but um, so just use 1983 U.S. state plane 1983, and then it'll position you horizontally. So you don't need a geoid model because you are not matching an, a um, surveyor. Your lot is so small, like it, it just it doesn't matter at this point. So we're not really matching anything. It's just purely for um, locating yourself on a uh, small housing pad. So first thing you need to do is create a work order. So I always like to create one called stake. It's just kind of my um, catch-all, if you will. There won't be anything else that we're going to be measuring that we need to like soil corrections, things like that. So uh, we don't have a design on the project yet. So we're just going to keep going through that. So. No design is needed. So you are using a published coordinate system. Do you want to adjust your project with a project calibration? Um, if you want to get fancy and bench it, you can. Um, I'm not going to go over that here. So, um, <clears throat> so you can see that we have an elevation. This is my emulator on my computer. So my elevation is going to be my rod height essentially. So, so you have elevation here. Again, it's not going to match control points for the most part, things like that. If you don't have geoid models loaded and, and, and um, understand tying into a, uh, a monument, known monument, things like that. So, um, so you can go up to your, what I would do is I would go up to my uh, place that I would bench my laser off of. So if it's another finished floor of the house next door, if it's a the finished floor, uh, if they gave you a benchmark and saying from this benchmark, we're going to be coming down and I would stay, I would just go in and I would take a shot on that and get the elevation off of it. Um, so that you have, where you know that you have to uh, do a vertical offset from to get to the bottom of your footing or the bottom of your um, slab. So, but for this instance, I'm just going to name everything at 100 and then that's where I'm going to assume it is. So I've got my little scale bar here. So it kind of uh, gives me a, a realistic house. So um, the nice thing about SiteWorks is you're going to start to see a model come to um, fruition over here, uh, the 3D model. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to physically occupy all of the stakes um, that the surveyors put out. For all the building corners so i'm going to stand on it and if i'm not using um, tilt comp i'm going to level up my range pull and then i am going to push uh, measure at that point so i like to name all my points um, numeric values i don't like to have them in alpha values so um, and then we can name it bc for building corner not super necessary especially on a small scale like this so uh, point type is going to be a surface make sure that says surface otherwise you won't get a surface um, and then I think you can come back afterwards and fix that too, but just it's easier. Uh, show every time, just say no and say accept.
So now you can see that that surface, so I'm going to walk over roughly feet based on my scale bar. Um, this is not going to be, um, this is not going to be squared up because I am just very arbitrary on this. So this is the front of my house. Take another shot. Sorry if that's loud. And then I'm going to go in a little bit of a jog here. And now you can see that 3D model starting to create itself. And then I'm going to go out about so 25 feet or so. And that's going to be my double car garage. And then I am going to step in because we have um, a third stall. So let's say that's 10 feet or so, somewhere in there, give or take. So that's my garage stall. This is the edge of my house coming in. And then the deep part. Come over here is the back corner of the garage. And then the house jogs back to the back here. Take a shot there. So now you can kind of start to see that come to life here. So then I'm going to come over here a little past it. And this is the back side of my house. Got to use your imagination a little bit. And then we're going to come to the front of the house here. The front corner. Pretty simple house, but you, you'll get the gist of it. So. <clears throat> so now you can see I've got it all done here. So um, garage, living area. Now if you see the, um, you can see I've got the, the building pad and it's kind of just a big glob here because it's not real clean or, or cleaned up. So. Uh, so what I need to do now is I need to elevate all these points to my 100 elevation. So the fastest way I've found to do it, and if somebody else has a better way, please let me know. But come into menu and then do uh, data management, go into point manager three options point manager again these are the all the points that you have you'll probably have a control point in here if you set a control point on that uh, but you can see the elevation is 6.562 feet <laughs> so what i'm going to do is say edit of the first point and i'm going to change my antenna height to elevation and now i've get that elevation if i just tap in that box this turns blue now you can start typing whatever your elevation is so wherever you went and measured that bench from you can say, uh, you know, you put that value in here. So if it's 103.25 and you need to go down 5.25 feet from that, whatever your same cut from those is what you're going to put in here. So I'm going to say 100. And then if I've got an eight foot tall wall plus uh, what, eight inches of footing, I'd, my vertical offset would be eight foot, eight inches, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to say 100. All you got to do is hit save. And then accept 100 and you'll have to go through all of these semi tedious but it doesn't take long you'll see I'm doing this all in the data collector I'm never exporting it to Trimble Business Center Now if you click on that, click in that box, it really does save some time. A lot of people think that you have to delete each number um, when you really don't. You just have to click on it and then you can overwrite it by just um, starting to go. You make sure you hit save and on to the next one. It goes pretty fast, like I said. So now I'm all done. Last one. Push save. And then I can get out of there. So now I can scroll through here and I can see all of my points are at 100. So now what I'm ready to do now is come into um, my Kogo and draw the house in. So again, I'll come to menu. I'll go to Kogo. I'll go to review and edit data. So you've got all these icons around along the left side. If you don't know what those are, you can come over to the question mark here. And you can see that create line boundary is the one I want but it tells you what all the other ones are too. So to get out of that, hit your X. So now I'm gonna say create line boundary. And the first thing I'm gonna do is change this to a, an outer boundary. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna contain the surface. I'm gonna change it to house. And now I'm just gonna go click and I am gonna play a game of connect the dots. So you can see I forgot this one. So I can always just say, go back. And then I can 
get all of those dots. I know this is the third one, but I can also zoom in just to make sure I get it. So now to connect those dots, I can just say um, close that gap and it closes it. Push accept. And now when I come out here, you can see that I have a house. <laughs> so um, what we need to do now is I don't, if you come in here, I don't have a cutter fill. Yes, I have a surface, but we don't have a cutter fill. So what I have to do now is come in here to data management and I can say surface as a design. And I'm gonna say include my measured line work New design is house. Push accept. And now I have to go to project setup. Change my project. Now I'm going to add that design so you can see design house is there. Uh, don't need to change my work order. It's still going to have that measured line work in it, but it's fine. So now you'll see that there's probably two lines in here. Yeah. So, so surface boundary and surface data. So the two things that I had started with. So that's okay. So now I picked that line and now I can go come in and measure that line. I'm going to go to random here. So if I needed to put a step in here, for instance, and I needed to be four feet up, you can see that my station is at zero. So now I'm going to be six feet from that corner. So I could put a step in here if I needed to put that, or you can figure out where that step needs to go based off the plans or based off of um, experience, I guess. So so now I have, uh, I can come back to any one of these points. So you can see there's that original point. So if once it's, um, if I want to double check after the um, the holes dug, I can make sure that all my corners fit in the house. I can go in and say stake point. And now I can see I'm five feet away, two feet away from that um, point to make sure that the house is wide enough. Um, or you can stake the lines like I just showed you too. A couple different things you can do. I'm just gonna hit measure just to get back into a, yeah. So the final step is to get this into a machine. So I'm gonna come up here to um, my menu again, hit data management, and now I'm gonna say export to machine. I'm going to export the data type as design, and I am going to pick either a CB450, 460, so like a uh, traditional um, GCS 900 system. It would be a CB460, and then Earthworks is um, the latest and greatest with the Android tablet touchscreen display. So pick whatever system you're working with. Um, select the project. You can select it right from here. You can select any of them, actually. So select the design. I only have one at this point. And then I can say, um, I'm going to say Earthworks here. And it's just active design as house. And now I pick whatever... Um, USB I have, so I've already got that plugged in the, the TSC 7, and then it'll automatically put it on there. So, and it should put it in the format if it if there's already a project library or machine control data folder on that USB stick, I think it should put it inside of that. If there is not, then it creates it for you. So, yeah, pretty simple. So, you can see in um, a long 13, 14 minutes, we created an entire house plan. Yes, that's sands walking around, but the half hour that this takes you to set up, I mean, um, you can have a 3D model that you can come back to over and over and over again. So, and then you can kind of work off of there too for um, side slopes or, or other, other things like that. So if you got any questions, let me know.